It's curious that the, the people for whom I'm reading are named for a place rather than for their names. It was from a place that they were taken, and that place was the Violations Documentation Centre in Syria, known as the VDC. I'm going to read a little bit from the Our Story section of the VDC website. The Violations Documentation Centre in Syria, VDC, was born in June 2011 to ensure a careful and independent documentation of all kinds of violations of human rights taking place in the country, both in the past, present and future, with the goal of becoming a reference not only for the media, but more importantly for all future accountability and justice-related procedures that will be much needed for Syria. By 2012, arbitrary killings and other acts of violations of human rights, including political arrests, violations committed against journalists, imprisonment without trial, travel bans, forced exile, deprivation of Syrian nationality, torture and killing grew alarmingly fast. While the situation in Syria turned into an armed conflict, as per the ICRC's legal qualification, thus with the applicability of the Geneva Conventions and customary international humanitarian law. So the VDC expands and includes the coverage of systematic violations, and it was from these offices that four persons were seized. If, however, bizarrely, you, you Google Duma, you'll find TripAdvisor reviews for people who have been staying as recently as January in stone caves that they review very, very happily. So on the 9th of December 2013, Razan Zaytouna, Samira Al Khalil, Wael Ham Hamada, and Nazim Hamadi were abducted. According to accounts, four unarmed activists, which is what they were, were abducted by four masked armed persons. And the demand is actually to release them immediately, and that demand has been renewed over the last three years. Obviously, this is not a thing that I felt happy to make poetry about. One of the disappeared persons was in fact a poet. I turned to the ever-powerful Google, whose algorithms, of course, are perfectly objective, and of course, I calculated their persons in dialogue with the arts and humanities, philosophers and human rights activists, which is of course, you know, how all our Google results come up. But when I Googled these people, I couldn't find any of the poet's poetry except a little bit in a YouTube broadcast in Arabic, and as mentioned as having been read in France in a solidarity reading. So very kindly, Kat Lucas recommended to me the documentary on Channel 4, Serious Disappeared, which I strongly recommend to you. And there I realized there were things about, it which, about which it would be obscene to make poetry. There were the stories of people who were shot when they were dancing, of people who were beaten more because they were doctors. These things were recounted by a survivor of one of the type of detention camps where we may imagine the Duma 4, that's hashtag capital D-O-U-M-A 4, and please do tweet, may be detained. And this person who was interviewed had tears running down his face where he spoke perfect sentences because the physical reactions of his body had been completely decoupled from his ability to give witness statements about himself. He said that there are things that can't be imagined, the human brain can't imagine it. And off screen you hear somebody say, and how do you feel about the people who did that to you? And then there's the longest silence in the entire documentary. The longest silence and the most movement from his eyelids, but his tears entirely stop falling. 
He talks about the detention, he talks about uh, <coughs> using pieces of fabric uh, and writing on them with chicken bones, rust and blood uh, to remember the names of people who have been disappeared or killed. Uh, he talks about the a tailor amongst them, among the detainees, uh, sewing these pieces into the hems and collars of shirts, uh, about these shirts being filled with souls. He talks about hospitals being turned into places of torture. And he also talks about the way that bodies turn into different colors. I had just been dancing at Carnival in Trinidad as one of the traditional masqueraders. I'm not actually what's known as a devil and a sailor. That's relevant though because there are three kinds of devils in Trinidad in the carnival. And I'm placing here a violation that I haven't experienced alongside another violation I haven't experienced because all of this is unimaginable. But some of this may give you ways in which are not available or knowable to me. So the Jack Molassi, the molasses devil, represents the vengeful spirit of a slave who was thrown into boiling molasses. What I've never understood were the red devils and the blue devils who completely smeared of the red and the blue. Well, I don't think they really do go back to medieval European tradition. But apparently, as I learned from this documentary, if you beat someone enough, their body will turn red or turn blue. Unavoidably, I wrote some poems because my head works that way. Eyes are weeping in the face. In the same face, the mouth is speaking. The uncoupling of tears from speech in those who offer witness in words whose bodies, blue or red from beating, were dancing where dancing meets shooting, singing where silence wants just one sentence. Just one sentence. How does that make you feel? That one whose fluency in words has come uncoupled from the fluids tracking the face during talking, ruling out truthful paragraphs where souls blister out from ducts, stops, tears and speech together, stopped by feelings. The answer is only in the eyelids. The language has arms of our supplying. UN Security Council Resolution 2139, demanding the release of all arbitrarily detained people in Syria. Statement, release them immediately, honored and revered. The facility of lists, unarmed, unknown, masked, betrayal, won't forget, won't ignore. Sometimes I hate my trained mind. Nuance has more off switches than levers. Men stormed. Men do not storm. These are not natural phenomena. A repeated call in all the material about the Duma 4 is uh, to agitate for the security of those detained as well as for their release. And this is something that I would ask you to consider security and release being different, though not unallied. But what I found interesting is the use of the images of those dead or disappeared in posters or in photographs, often held aloft as banners. And I was thinking, uh, in this island, which has had one or two referendums recently, about what it must be like for people who are not happy you know, with the remnants of empires such as myself uh, too visibly populating the streets, uh, let alone anyone else coming. What it must look like to those people when in the name of human rights, what they see going through a village or a town is lots of brown people 
and some chattering class people and some students carrying placards with more brown people. Is it possible for people who perhaps are not concerned actively already in protest, people who are not here, people who would not be interested that you are here, but we are here, what would it look like to them? How would it make them feel? What a thing it is to lift the photos, pictures, placards, and posters of people who were, should be, might be, are alive. What a process. What it is to process through the streets, not standing shoulder to shoulder with, not seen as standing on the shoulders of, those heroically beloved and otherwise who have gone before this some 10,000 years before, but to share the process of lifting aloft the image of them in two dimensions, this being the condition in which to gift them body and time. What a possibility of making nice local people angry, alienating potential allies, losing actual neighbours by bearing aloft as Burnham Wood to Dunsinane, an army of martyr faces like new and unkillable migrants, strange fruit that goes to the Sunday table. What a possibility of making a mirror of morning in which the brown dead bud out in too many particulars. Chess champions, party girls, lawyers and gardeners. What a possible shame and fear and revulsion. Don't make them like us. Don't bring them too close. Don't claim they are like us. They are unimaginable, and keep them so, for we already find this little island hard to live on, and identity in mortality is unimaginable, must leave us cold. I don't really feel justified in appropriating the voices of those who have disappeared. I feel completely justified and shall continue to appropriate the voices of all my fellow British citizens, even when I moved to Scotland. <laughs> There's a forensic scientist who smuggled photographs of corpses from the detention centres, which of course were dismissed as fake news, photoshopped by Assad himself. And According to the lawyers outside Syria who are trying to find out whether there's a European corpse, such as a law case could be brought, they go where the documents lead them, they're not trying to make a case against the regime. But as a Syrian woman noted, if corpses have been minced, it's much harder to identify them. And there is no way that I shall write a descriptive poem about what was on that film. This is my last piece, but I, I do recommend that you look up the Violations Documentation Center in Syria. The facility of lists. After seeing footage from the detention center, I wanted to ban mannequins, barcodes, and loaves of sliced bread. Thank you.